Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about the problem with .NET 9 and actually C Sharp 13 as well because the release candidate or RC1 just came out so we kind of have all the features that will be in the release kind of set in stone it's more likely something will be removed than added at this point so in this video I want to take a look at the release and what's coming because I think that this release is a bit underwhelming and that might be on purpose. I will explain all that in the video, but I want that to be more of a discussion. So if at any point you want to jump into the conversation, leave a comment down below and let's have a healthy discussion in the comments. So Microsoft just released RC1 and they just updated all the watch new in .NET 9 blogs and documentation on the website. And I went through everything and the release is kind of boring. I mean, all the really interesting stuff, in my opinion anyway, are .NET Aspire related and even then it's kind of underwhelming so let me explain what I mean and I'm going to start with C Sharp 13 first because C Sharp 13 was supposed to have this amazing extensions everything feature which was massive but unfortunately was taken out and delayed and what we're left with a set of features that I don't think I've seen that underwhelming features since many releases ago. In my opinion, the most interesting one is RefStruct interfaces, which will get its own video when the feature is officially out, because that is insane. And also, this is insane, are the allows keyword, as well as the ref and unsafe iterators in async methods. But the problem is those features are so, so niche, and primarily they're those very, very clever features that are really added for Microsoft, than for us. Now, I'm not saying I'm not going to use them, I absolutely will, but I will be in the majority and I know that. And then what do we have? I think by far the most used one will be uh, params collections, which allows you to have the parameters keyword or the params keyword on spans or read-only spans, as well as types that implement the enumerable and they also have an add method. I've talked about the feature already, amazing feature. And then you're probably going to use the new lock object. Your code will use it actually by default with you doing nothing. But then new escape sequence, like, <laughs> I get it. This is being added, but should it be the third thing we talk about here in this blog, as well as the method group natural type, which, <sighs> you know, you don't even have code to show. <laughs> I don't know. Then implicit index access, incredibly niche feature. You really never write code like this unless you're doing probably like image processing or heavy maths, maybe AI, but it's just mega niche. And then the two features I talked about, and then partial members, you can have the partial keyword on properties and indexes, which is amazing because you now don't have to have a method primarily for regex source generation, but that's about it. That's all we're getting. It, they're so minor. None of these features will really change the way we write C Sharp. And I do want to point out, it doesn't have to. .NET 9 is an STS, meaning it will be supported for 18 months. So it's not an LTS, which is actually three years. So it can afford to be a smaller release. But historically, what Microsoft has been doing is they've been putting the bigger, more quirky, weird, and interesting features on an STS. And then they had the chance to iron them out for the LTS because that's when they're going to be supported. So if you bring a bigger feature on an LTS and it's kind of half-baked, well, then you end up with a half-baked feature for three years. Plus, it's harder to make it better retroactively because code using it already exists and you have to make it backwards compatible. So I'm not quite sure about C Sharp 13. Not my favorite release, but the good thing about it, as well as .NET 9 because not much is being added, is that the code we write will be more relevant for longer. And as someone who's running a courses platform, Dome Train, well, that's better for us because we need to make less update to our courses. And actually, funny I say that because we just launched our back to school discount on Dome Train. So until the end of September, you can use code BTS30 to get 30% off any of our courses. Link below. But let's take a look at .NET 9. And here's sort of a, a summary of what's being added. So it looks like many things are being added. And some of the ones you might have heard already are the new GUID method. So you can use a .new GUID method on the GUID to create a UUI version for GUID. But if you want uh, a time-based sortable GUID, then you can use the method create version 7. And you can also pass a date time offset if you want to control the date time. And that's an amazing feature. And I think tons of people will use that because, well, it will replace the need for having a library. So you might migrate to that. 
the Zlib stuff are cool and all of the archiving stuff are awesome, but how many people are using them? I don't know. Now with them being better, I think more people will use them. And something I've been using from the moment it came out in the preview is this couple of new link methods. So count by and aggregate by dome train code is already using these methods because they make calculations so, so much easier. But looking at everything else, it looks very much like Microsoft is improving in what's there. Now, the addition of allows ref structs is an insane feature, which it deserves its own video. I'm going to make that video to explain what I mean, because that is game changing. And I think it's very understated, but everything else is just refining and additions. And of course, we're always going to get performance improvements. You know, I can't wait for Stephen Tobes seven books of Harry Potter explaining why .NET 9 is faster than .NET 8. But other than that, I don't see something that I'm saying, oh yeah, that's that's awesome, that's cool. It's all fine. The story is the same in the SDK, not much of interest happening here. And the ASP.NET Core side of things doesn't look that different. Blazor is blazoring and it has its own section explaining what's happening. So. Plenty of things is happening here and Maui still exists. It's still getting support, but it looks like Microsoft is focusing on things that got less love in the previous releases. So things like Signal R, there's plenty of Signal R stuff and plenty of Aspire Signal R stuff as well. Minimal APIs are keep getting more and more features. Not much. You can see there's only two sections here, but it does seem like they keep ironing them out. And then the whole open API change where uh, the Swashbuckle packages are being removed and they're being replaced with these add open API and map open API methods. I love that change. I made a video on this change. I think it's a good change overall. And it's awesome that because of this, we also have a way to export now JSON objects, well, C sharp objects into JSON schemas. It's very, very nice. But other than that, in my opinion, the most interesting things are in miscellaneous. So hybrid cache library, awesome. But we had I distributed cache and now code that uses it will need to be updated to use hybrid cache. And why did we release something that was half baked and then add the wrapper around it? Basically, I don't know. Also, if you're already using Fusion Cache, look into this. You might be able to just replace the library with this, which I'm generally not very happy with. If someone has a library, does Microsoft need to build it into .NET? I don't know, but it keeps happening. And then the rest is just improvements, 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 and metric stuff, which are very welcome because the more metrics we have, the more we know what's happening in our applications. That is awesome, but nothing that I can show someone and be like, oh, wow, this is gonna make my life so so much simpler it's just improvements and then ef core uh, full disclosure i'm more of a dapper user in production so all of my code in production is in dapper not because i don't like ef core it's just that i like controlling everything about my sql improvements for aot uh, link and sql translation execute update execute delete and a bunch of different smaller things so in many ways following all the development and the release of this version this, in my opinion, seems to be the least interesting .NET version in years. But the counterpoint to that can be that people have been asking for a less interesting .NET version for years because we get a new .NET version and C# -sharp version every year. Is .NET moving too fast? And leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Because some people say it's not moving fast enough. Some people say it's moving way too fast. We can't migrate. We can't move. Also, 18 months for STS doesn't make it possible for some people to jump in it, which I don't get because Microsoft rarely breaks code from one version to another. So it's usually just changing a few numbers and that's it. And it makes people stay in older versions longer. So that's what I think about .NET 9 and C Shop 13. I think taking a break is fine, but that means, again, in my opinion, that .NET 10 has to be really, really good. And if we at least get extensions on everything, I think it will. And if Microsoft keeps pushing Aspire forward, I think that's going to be awesome. But now I wonder from you, what do you think about this? And is there anything you're looking forward to from this release? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.